It's the grandson of right thought. Israel, in order to understand your relationship, man and woman, then we must understand the essence of our divine origins. Our divine parents. Abiyah, Amahua, our divine parents. We have to understand their essence. We have to know them in order to embody them or put forth their image on this earth as male and female. We have to understand our divine parents. When we say Abba Yah, we say Abba Yah outwardly so that you can pronunciate that word. But what is it really? When we say Yah, in the Hebrew, we're actually taking an inhalation of breath. That's the sound. Hua. 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 And when we say that, we're saying, Behold the hand, behold the nail. Behold the hand, behold the nail. So there's a penetrator and there is something being penetrated, the hand and the nail, the male and the female. It's easy to understand which one is which. So when you pierce that hand out comes blood. When a man and a woman come together and he pierces that veil out comes blood. Sign of a covenant the hands that were pierced, the sign of the covenant. Behold the hand, behold the nail, male and female. So that force, that power, that masculine. How do we know that's what it is? When a man does anything that he does, before he does it with force, he takes that breath. And then he bears down. He lifts that weight, he throws that punch, he lifts that, that, that object, he thrusts during lovemaking, but he has to take a breath first. And then he takes that breath out, which is the feminine, what we call hawa. So it's all breaths. That's why it's ineffable, the name of the Most High. It's the breath, the holy breath. The circle of energy that gives us, gives us life when we're making love. When we're lifting weights. When we're exerting force and energy, we're giving praises to the Most High. Abba Yah. Amahua, the divine feminine, the the outward breath, expression of the divine inspiration, expresses it, demonstrates it outwardly, the breath, the going out of, the representation of wisdom. Now read Proverbs and see if it does not say wisdom is her and she. Divine wisdom. So when King Solomon asked for the gift of wisdom, what did he receive? He received the feminine principle of the Most High. Divine wisdom. It's silent. You can't hear it. You don't know where it come from. But it expresses itself outwardly where you can see the wisdom. Wow, that person is wise, but you don't know how they received it. You don't know where it came from. You don't know how they got wise, but they are because you can outwardly see it. It's the same with the woman expression. So what she's receiving from the masculine, which we call divine thought or that 
when we take that big old breath to get that power, then we bear down masculine energy. And once we lift that object, we whew, breathe the air out. Once we've, once we've accomplished the, the force that's necessary, then we breathe that air out. Just like what a woman does when she receives, she's filled with the energy, the masculine. And she expresses that out, divine wisdom. How else did Solomon know what to do with those two women that brought their case before him about that child? When you read about that story, you see there were two women. One, they both had a child, a newborn baby. And as they slept, one of the women rolled, or baby died in the sleep. So she took the other woman's baby and acted like it was hers. And when the woman woke up, she knew that her baby was gone. And she knew it was her baby. But the other lady insisted that her baby had died. She placed the dead baby in her arms. So they took this before the king, Solomon. And Solomon said, well, cut the baby in half and split the baby and give each one half of the baby. Well, the fake mother said, yeah, go ahead on and do that. The real mother said, no, please don't do that. A mother, feminine energy, being expressed for her child. Correct? No one knows the child like the mother. Nine months before anyone else had any relationship with this child, the mother did. Had an intimate relationship with this baby. Knows what the baby like, knows what the baby don't like. Knows when the baby's moving, knows how strong the baby is. Knows when that baby's excited and when the baby's not. Knows when the baby's happy and when the baby's not. The mother knows all this before anyone else has even seen the baby. She has an intuitive relationship with this baby. Wisdom. You can't see it, it's hidden, but it's there. Just like a man, when he goes out in the world, he's taking care of his business. And he has his woman next to him where he goes. She's not saying anything. She's talking to him. So when he sits down at the business meeting, and he's hearing all of the things that are going on. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. He hears all the offers, everything. All the people that are talking to him. Then he secretly goes to his wife, Wisdom. And he says, what do you think? And she tells him what she has received who to trust, who not to trust, what options are good options, what options are not. And he takes those things into consideration and then he acts. Just like Abraham and Sarah did. If you want an example on how to run your relationship, Israela, male and female, look at Abraham and Sarah. Abraham did not deviate from his head which is what kept him a viable leader. So you men, let's speak exp expressly to you right now. You're talking about the women and you're talking about their downfalls and you're talking about their shortcomings and what they should wear and how they should dress and what they should eat and how they should be and how they should be quiet and how they should have their hair wrapped and how they should have skirts down to their feet, how they have fringes on their garment and what they should be is staying at home with the kids and shutting the fuck up and being quiet. But what about you? What is your role today? You say keeping the commandments of the Most High. Well, what fulfills that law that you have to keep? See, because the same thing that you're receiving is the same thing you're going to give to your woman. Harshness and strictness with rudimentary. You must do this, 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 this. Is that how you feel? Because how do we fulfill that law that was given to us, man, that we have to perform? We fulfill it by loving. So then is it not true that you are to love your woman first? First. Because how can you instruct her without being kind? How can you tell her what she should do without being patient and long suffering with her? How can you demonstrate how she should be? If you're not being those things, if you're putting rules on her, telling her, well, you have to do this, 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 if you want to be pleasing. If you dress like this, if you walk like this, if you do like this, then you'll be pleasing. Is that what you feel about yourself with the Most High? Do you feel like that will be pleasing to the Most High is what you were wearing? What you ate today?
Is that what you feel like is going to be pleasing to the Most High? How your garment looked? So if you're more concerned with a woman, whether she has on a skirt or whether she has on pants, and you're worried about the wrong damn thing, you ain't worried about her heart first. You ain't got her heart clean first. Because that obviously means your heart ain't clean first. Correct or not? Because when she asks you, which is what the scriptures say, which is what you keep telling her, go home and ask your husband if you want to know about the word. Well, when she asks you, ultimately, hubby, what is it that I should do? What do you tell her? What, are you, what is your response? Is it that you love? Is that what you're telling her? First. Baby, it's that we love God and love our neighbor as ourself. That's all you got to do. And then show her and demonstrate to her what love is. Tell her what it is out the scriptures and then demonstrate it. Be kind. Be patient. Don't be envious. Don't be seeking your own man. Don't rejoice in lie and wickedness, but rejoice in the truth. When you hear the truth, rejoice in that. But don't rejoice when she's lying to you. Hope all things, believe all things, conquer all things, endure all things. Do not be puffed up, man, and prideful, haughty. Do not vaunt thyself up. Dwell with her with understanding, according to knowledge. So if you're one of those men who are destroyed for lack of knowledge, you ain't got it, then you don't need to be leading no woman, do you? You can't. You can't tell her what she should do. You can't tell her what she should be doing, what she should be wearing, what she should, I told you, what she should be eating, how she should be acting if you yourself don't know what you should be doing. Which is what somebody asks you, what should be your answer? Quick and easy, what should it be? That we love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and all of our might, our strength, and love our neighbor as ourself. And if we do these things, we have fulfilled the law. Because if you believe that scripture, what you say you're standing on, is that not what it says in Romans? He who loveth has fulfilled the law. For love is the fulfilling of the law. Is that not what it says in there? So then why are you giving her laws to keep without giving her love? First. First. How shall she find her voice but through you, her husband? In order for her to say something, she has to take a breath in. Does she not? Does she not have to take a breath in? In order to exhale? Waiting to exhale? Is she not waiting to exhale? The woman? Where is her force? Where is her power? That's demanding it, but won't stand in it. Where is the man today? Show your character by your fruits. Are you slow to anger? Are you quick to listen and quick to hear? Are you understanding? When she expresses herself to you. Are you hearing her side? Despite whether you agree with it or not. Are you hearing it? Are you allowing her to express it? To breathe? Or are you being judgmental today? Not understanding that she's just as confused as you were before you came into the truth. She's just as ignorant and lost. Trying to do what she believes is the right thing as best as her ability. Because that's all what we're doing out here. If you're a female in this world, unprotected, what do you expect to see in her? When she comes here as the void... Empty and pure. The first things that are put into her are lies.
pain, molestation, evilness, lust, all about the 3D with her. That's all she's ever been taught about herself. It's how to appear physically. There was never any man there to tell her about the values of the inside woman. That those were the things of value. So why are you angry with her? Why are you not showing it to her and demonstrating it to her? That those are the things of value. She needs you to show her that that's what it is that's valuable to you. And not the things that are outworked. But how is she supposed to do that if that's all you care about, man? It's how big her titties are. How round her ass is. How small her waist is. How pretty her eyelashes look. How long her hair is. If that's the only thing that matters to you, the outward adorning of the braiding of the hair and the changing of apparel, if that's what's valuable to you, man, then that's what she's going to make valuable to her. And you can't blame her for that. Can't you see that she's trying to express what she feels like you desire of her? Can't you see that's what it is? So then as a man, you pull away from that nonsense. You pull away of the outward of the adorning and the tricks. Because a woman can trick you. She could be ugly as fuck and adorn that shit up and paint that shit up and make that shit look beautiful and trick your ass if you're looking for the outward. But once you display to her that those things are not of value, they are secondary to what's in that heart of hers, then she will build her heart up to, her heart up to be pleasing to you. But how will she know if you don't shine that light? If you don't take that breath for her? Inspire her. Look up the word inspire, the etymology of the word inspire. Inspire means to breathe in to. To breathe life into. So do you inspire a woman today to be better by your actions and how you are? Are you inspiring her? So that she can... Be her. Silawam, Israelah.